Hello, welcome all. Welcome to another important video. I hope you all are doing great. In this video, we will learn about serverless computing. So serverless computing is a way through which cloud providers provide their backend services. We will see what is the difference between cloud computing and serverless computing and which is cost effective and which benefits we get with cloud computing and which benefits we get with serverless computing. So to explain serverless computing, I have taken three different eras because I believe we will understand use of serverless computing only when we know history. History will help us understanding how web development industry evolve over the years. So here I have taken three different eras. First and the oldest era was there was no cloud computing. After this era, new era came in where the cloud computing introduced. And then there is a latest era which we are currently witnessing is a serverless computing. Okay. And we will see how the things were working in each era so that we will better understand importance of serverless computing. So let's get started. Okay. So let's take one common example. Uh, we will take one example where we want to deploy our website. So let's see how deploying website in each era were working and how the things evolve over the years. So let's imagine the era where there was no cloud computing. That means there was no cloud providers, AWS, Amazon Azure, no Google Cloud were there. So at that time, if any company wanted to deploy their website, that company had to create their own servers. So as you can see here, this is a server and first they have to create servers and then only they can deploy their website on that server. But if you imagine how hard it is to create server and maintain it, it is not at all cost effective because when you think about creating your own server, you will have to think about maintaining scalability. You have to maintain its security you have to maintain its availability and all these things takes time takes a lot of money so this solution were not at all cost effective but at that time there was no other solution so the way the things were working earlier is company were creating their own servers and then they were deploying their websites on that server okay so this is how the things were working because there was no other way. So people identified this issue and they come up with a solution called cloud computing. So in this cloud computing era, new player came into the market and they have created their own data centers. They have created their own servers. So let's say this is server one, this is server two, this is server three. And they started renting out servers based on the requirement. So let's say there is a company C1 and there is a company C2. They both need servers to deploy their website. Now, since there is a cloud computing, they do not have to create their own servers. They want to deploy their website. They will come to cloud providers and will say, okay, I need machine which has one GB of RAM and uh, let's say 50 GB of ROM, 50 GB of ROM. So this, so the cloud provider were saying, okay, we have this server available. You can subscribe, you can take this on a rent and company C1 is paying. So the company were paying fixed cost to the service provider and service provider were allowing company C1 to use this particular space. So let's say if company C C2 want 4 GB of RAM machine and 4 GB of RAM machine and he needs let's say 100 GB in ROM. So in that case company C2 will reach out to cloud service provider again and cloud service provider will say okay I have this machine let's take access of this and, and pay me XX amount as a fixed cost. So, so certainly things got improved because now company do not have to create servers in order to deploy a website. So cost reduced and company were happy at that time. But again, if you see this entire process, you will observe there are some flaws in this entire process. So the first flaw is 
there is a fixed cost assigned to this. So there is a fixed cost. So if company C2 wants to deploy their website and they assumed, okay, I'll need 4 GB of RAM. Again, this 4 GB of RAM is, is the number that company C2 assumed. Okay. Certainly they might end up using less memory than 4 GB. So maybe they will use only 2 GB and 2 GB will remain free. And th there will be some days when company might need more than 4 GB of RAM. So in that case, the solution, this cloud computing we're providing is not at all cost effective because let's say if they are using only 2 GB, then they are overpaying cloud service provider because 2 GB of RAM is waste. Okay. Among the 4 GB, 2 GB RAM is not in use. Also, the second problem that they have identified is, let's say if you have enabled auto scaling on your cloud. So in that case, your cloud will automatically scale if your usage is increased. But now let's say if any hacker performed DDoS attack on your website. So in that case, again, cloud will think, okay, you need more servers, you, you need more space, more RAM. So they will auto scale it. In this case also, you are overpaying your cloud service providers because you're not using the servers as much as you need. So certainly we require better solution in this case. And the new solution came in, which is serverless computing. So in this case also, there are cloud service providers. I know the serverless name is kind of misleading, but there are servers involved, but the only difference is it works behind the scenes. Let's take same example. There, there are cloud provider, let's say AWS. They have their own servers and there is a company, let's say C1 and there's a company called C2. There are two companies. So this C1 company is trying to provide solution where they have a website and this website provides list of hotels. Okay. It is hotel booking website. So in this hotel booking website, user will come, they will search specific hotel name or maybe area. Let's say, uh, India, they have searched India hotels, hotels in India. And now company C2's website job is to fetch the, fetch that particular data and provide a list of all available hotels. So in this case, the way things will work is as soon as any user make a request to search any particular data, this will invoke serverless services. So let's say Lambda. We'll discuss about Lambda in our upcoming videos, but let's for now, let's remember this is a serverless service and this Lambda will fetch data from the database and it will return back it to the front end. Now here, C company C1 haven't deployed their website on any dedicated server. Okay. So this Lambda will get invoked on the fly as soon as user make a request. So the, the way things have changed here is first of all, you don't have to pay any fixed cost in this case because you, do, you are not deploying your website on a server. You will use services only when you need it. You are using resources as much as you need. So in this case, you can see there was two GB RAM left. So this case will not be here because as soon as you invoke Lambda, Lambda will automatically calculate how much RAM it needs to execute that particular task and it will automatically assign it. So, so the different here is, first of all, it is cost effective. It is cost effective. Second thing is it is fully managed service. That means cloud service provider itself take care of maintaining security, maintaining availability, maintaining scalability, all these things is not companies overhead. It's now overhead of the cloud providers. So things became more easy. Don't confuse yourself with the name serverless because even the name is serverless behind the scenes, it is using servers. It's just that company is not maintaining or subscribing to specific server. Okay. You don't have to worry about where this Lambda will get created. You don't have to worry about how to scale up this Lambda. You don't have to worry anything. You just have to write 
your business logic which you will write inside this lambda and this lambda will take care of providing that particular information to your front end and this entire serverless model work on pay as you go model where you have to pay only that much as much as you will use okay so let's say this lambda function run for two seconds and it has used let's say 500 kb of memory so in this case you have to pay only this much computing cost you don't have to pay entire fixed cost of that server so this is how the things have changed over the years i hope you have understood this entire concept and if you have any questions do let me know in the comments i think that's it for this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye